folks, I wanted to give you a video on how to do pitch detection in Max. Uh, there are actually a couple different ways you can do pitch detection in Max, but I'm going to just show you one of them. So the first thing that we're going to need is an easy uh, ADC. To get a microphone input, we could do this with uh, something like SF Play. Uh, if we want to detect the pitch in like a song file, uh, but I'm going to just use the microphone for now. And the object, the fundamental object that does pitch detection is called retune with tilde because it's an MSP object. And uh, what else am I going to put in here? I want a meter just so I can tell that my microphone is on and working. I should actually make sure I'm using the same channel here. Uh, okay, so um, by itself, the, the retune object isn't actually going to help us out that much. I need to give it several parameters uh, to, to make sure that it's going to do pitch detection in a timely manner. So um, the first attribute I'm going to give it is uh, pitch detection and I'm just going to give it the argument of one for that attribute to turn pitch detection on. So I'm saying do retune with pitch detection. And immediately just with that um, I can see the frequency of the pitch coming in from the, the mic. And to do that I need a, I'm going to use a, look at it as a number but because I'm working with signals, I need a special uh, kind of number. So I am going to make a number with a tilde, which is going to say work with MSP and accept signals. And you'll see it looks kind of like a flow num box, but it's got this uh, the, the signal tilde there. And the second outlet from Retune is the signal for the frequency. So I'm going to connect that up. And now I can test this out. I'll lock my patch, turn this on. And you can see my mic is working, so if I whistle, okay. So I have to be kind of uh, loud for, for to get the retune to, to start working. You can see that when I'm talking kind of quietly, um, it doesn't register that, right? It needs a, a loud noise. Okay, then the other thing I want to look at is uh, what's coming out of this last outlet here, which says the um, closest note and deviation in cents. And if I print that out, uh, and look at my max window, I'm getting this message called onset. And then I'm getting two values. All right, you can see one's uh, an integer, and the other is a float. And uh, what am I looking at here? So it's the closest note and deviation from it in sense. So it's kind of like what is what is the closest uh, frequency in terms of a, a note, and then um, how basically like sharp or flat am I off of that? All right, so how do I get that, though, as something I can actually use, right? So this is actually a list of three things. It's uh, a symbol, onset, uh, which is like a, a word or a string in other programming languages. And then we've got the, the integer and a float. So I'm going to use an object called route to help me out with this. And what route does is I can give route a particular flag to look for. I could give it a number, like route anything that begins with the number one through this outlet, or I can give it a, a symbol or a word. So I'm going to say, um, I want to route, I want the two numbers after onset, right? Because that's my note uh, there. So I'm going to say, I want to route anything, any list that begins with onset, um, separate that out from this. Okay. And so now it's going to say this is the output if it matches onset. So now let me take my print 
get rid of that, put that over there. And now, and now I'm getting nothing. Hmm. All right, so this is great because um, it's giving me uh, an opportunity to show some debugging. So I'm not getting what I thought I would get out of here, right? I thought um, I'd be getting like a negative one zero from there. But so however that works is the first one is gonna give me onset. I could add other things to here, like if it matches the word cat, um, write that somewhere else. So then it's gonna give me uh, cat over here and suddenly it starts working. Okay, that's great. Um, but another thing I could do to, to test this is the dump out here is every, anything that doesn't match is going to come out uh, of here. So if I sent something in here, like uh, let me make a new message, we'll send it a dog. So if I send a message dog in here, it's going to come out here because a dog is not onset or cat. Okay. So let me go back to printing my onset. And so you'll see now, instead of getting onset in two numbers, I'm just getting the two numbers. Okay, so I still need to separate those out from each other. Uh, having them together doesn't help me. And so when I have a list, a one way of breaking up a list is to unpack it. So I'm gonna use the unpack object. And then for unpack to work, I need to give it uh, the things I expect to come out of it. So looking at this list, I keep saying like there's an integer and a float, right? So um, the first value in the list is an integer, so I'm going to say i, and then the second value is a float, so I'm going to say f. So I'm saying take a, take a list that I know is in this format and break it up. And then we'll see, since I gave it two arguments, I'm going to get two outputs, element one and element two. Um, I, can, I can string as many things onto this uh, as I want to. Uh, depending on how long my list is, right? So if I have five numbers, I could have I, 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 if I had five integers. All right, so now let me make uh, an integer box and a float box so I can look at what these numbers are. There we go. All right. And now we've got usable numbers, right? So from this, now I can put my uh, conditional on here. I could be like, if the number equals uh, nine, play this video, okay, right, uh, using um, an object like equals equals nine. And I just seem to be getting nine a lot, so let's see if this works, and you can see that toggle flashing every now and then when my pitch equals nine. But you might be wondering, like, okay, that's, that's cool and all, but uh, what what does that really get me? Is there a, a way uh, to know what actual note that is? Like, that would be cool, because I'm getting a frequency, right? So the, the frequencies are corresponding to these numbers. I should be able to tell what note that is. Um, I could look it up, or uh, I could unlock like a hidden feature of number box. Um, so let me make another number box and connect it. So right now, these two are the same, but I'm gonna look at this one in the inspector and the very top, when I'm looking at all the settings, uh, it has display format, and its default state is decimal integer, which might sound kind of strange because it doesn't have a decimal, it's just an integer. Uh, but I could look at this number in hex, in binary, in a couple different formats. If I look at it in MIDI, it's gonna give me an actual note. It's gonna give me the note value, it's gonna give me if it's sharp or flat, and um, then what like what scale it's on, right? Is it a middle C or a high C? And again, you can see the frequency corresponding to those notes. Um, so that's one way that you can detect pitch. Uh, if you're looking online for other ways you can to detect pitch, you'll, you might see reference to objects like uh, F0, which is built into Max, that's another way. Um, and then there's two very popular externals, um, pitch and fiddle. I haven't talked much about uh, how externals work, um, 
but there is kind of like a, a library or an extension to Max that you can add on. Um, so that's working with pitch. One other thing I will mention, just because it, it might come up and you might uh, uh, have to deal with this depending on, on your computer system and uh, like the quantity of audio that you're trying to detect, you might run into latency issues doing this process uh, using Retune. So there are some things you can add uh, to this just to see how well you're doing. Um, and so I might want, in addition to pitch detection, I'm going to turn on latency reporting. So if I say report latency and give that a one to turn it on, and then um, to increase the efficiency of this object, I can turn on use 16-bit, which is telling it to use 16-bit encoding instead of 8-bit. Add a one to that. All right, and that will um, just make this object longer. And then something else I could route out of here is um, latency. If I go back and look at my uh, what am I getting out of here? You'll see now I'm getting this latency. Okay. So I can add that to my route and a number box, and this is if it matches latency. And so then when it ever it does its latency reporting, I can see um, uh, what the what the delay is uh, on this object. Okay, that is how to do pitch detection in Max.